Although apparently made of a single substance, the tyre is a complex assembly of various components. It is made with over 200 raw materials. It all starts with the preparation of the basic components. The rubber is made up of four types of materials. Rubber or elastomer, reinforcing fillers, plasticizers and chemical additives. The rubber or elastomer is either natural, that is produced from the cultivation of the rubber tree, or synthetic, that is made from oil. These raw materials, conditioned in bales, are shredded to facilitate the preparation of the rubber compound. Carbon black and silica reinforcing fillers are added to these elastomers, giving the rubber its wear resistance. Various plasticizers, such as oils or resins, help to make the compounds uniform and facilitate extrusion. Other ingredients come in powder or granule form. These are chemical additives, and their dosage amount is an extremely complex operation on an industrial scale. Formulation must be permanently accurate and regular. These additives include sulphur, and we will see later on that it plays an essential role in obtaining the mechanical properties of the rubber compound. All these components are carefully mixed until perfectly uniform. The way the various components are mixed and cured is as important for the performance of the tyre as are the choice and quantities of the materials. The amount of each compound is carefully measured to meet requirements in terms of flexibility, resistance, grip, etc. The rubber compound then obtained is identified to ensure full traceability and then conditioned for subsequent transformation. The tyre is also made up of long metal cables and textile cords made of aramid, nylon, etc. to withstand the significant stresses to which it is subjected, the first being inflation. Once these various components have been prepared, they will be transformed into a multitude of elements. Flat products, shaped bead fillers, metal or textile wires, as well as bead wires. Production then starts on the drum, a rotating cylinder with edges that can be brought together and the centre that can be inflated. We shall see why. The first element to be laid on the drum is a thin, airtight sheet of synthetic rubber which acts as an inner tube. It is then topped with a fabric ply encased in rubber. These cords form the radial carcass of the tyre. Extruded rubber bead fillers are installed on either side to accommodate the bead wires, which are inextensible metal hoops used to clamp the tyre firmly against the wheel rim. The carcass ply is folded up over the bead wire to secure it in place. Then it is the turn of the other parts to be added, including the side walls made of tough yet flexible rubber, which are designed to protect the carcass from side impact. The centre of the drum is inflated to bring the two edges together and give the tyre nearly its final shape. Two plies are added to the tyre crown. They are reinforced with metal wires which are placed crosswise to the carcass ply in order to form a solid network of triangles. The assembly of these components to tolerances within one tenth of a millimetre will give the tyre its performance in terms of safety, longevity, energy efficiency and comfort. A fret or fabric ply is then laid down forming a belt that encircles the tyre in the direction of rotation. At high speed, it will prevent deformation due to centrifugal force. Lastly, an extruded profile is laid down. This is the tread, the part in contact with the road surface. The first stage of the tyre's construction is now complete. It can now be transported to the curing mould. A bladder filled with pressurised hot fluid in the centre of the mould forces the still malleable substance to flow into all the cavities of the tread pattern engraved inside the mould. The heat of the fluid around the mould starts the curing process. The increase in temperature causes the sulphur contained in the rubber compound to bond with the rubber molecules. This is what we call vulcanization. 
The rubber is then transformed from a plastic to an elastic state. When ejected from the mould and after cooling, the tyre has taken on its final shape and properties. Michelin, a better way forward.